I absolutely love a bit of natural water bream fishing, especially in the summer once it starts to warm up. We're so lucky here in England, we've got some fantastic waters. So if you like going and doing a bit of bream fishing, hopefully what I'm gonna talk about today will really help you out. Now, the thing that you need to remember first of all is, in my opinion, in England, any natural big water where you're fishing for bream, it has to be fish meal pellet based ground baits. There is definite, definite advantages to those ground baits and all our country's bream seem to be tuned into them. I just haven't been anywhere on a big natural water when I'm fishing for big bream that don't love a pellet based ground bait. Slightly different when you're targeting roach and skimmers, but we're talking about those bream today, proper brown bream. They're the ones we want to catch. So that's why I'm going to talk about my choices as I do. Now, First of all, you have to think in your mind about the water that you're on. Today, I'm at the beautiful Staunton Harold, and it's deep. It's a big, deep water. There's a bit of some waves on. It's rough. Everything has to be sort of like manned up, if you like, a little bit more coarse and uh, gritty. That's what you're looking for on these waters. So my go-to base ground bait has to sort of tick those boxes, be strong, pellet-based fish meal, and also be quite coarse. That's what 5050 Green does. That is my go-to ground bait for all these big waters. It really, really dominates my mixes because it ticks those two boxes of being really strong and really gritty. Now, if I want to play with that a little bit, okay, let's say I draw slightly a shallower area or I'm going to one of these big waters that's a big water, but it's a bit shallower and I want to just soften my mix down very slightly. I've got F1 green with me. Now, I love the green color in these ground baits. So rather than F1 dark, F1 green, it's very similar, but it's green in color. So it means I can almost dilute the 50-50 a little bit if I need to, all right? So today, it's deep where I'm fishing. It's a big water. I'm almost going to be fishing like four fifths of the 50-50 and then just a little bit of F1 green because it's got a little bit of a sweet smell and it's a little bit more expander base. So it comes out of my feeder a bit nicely, but it's going to be predominantly this. Now, somewhere, I don't know, somewhere shallower that would say six foot deep. I mean, I'm going to be faced with 20 foot here, I think today, but if it would say six foot deep, I'd probably be using this ground bait in equal quantities, 50% method and paste uh, in the green and 50% of the F1 green. So you can see how I sort of work with my mixes to try and get that transition dead right. It's also worth noting, and I've known this now for a year or so, and it's actually sort of got in my head a little bit. We have to use natural dyes when we're dyeing the bait, and it's actually an algae-based dye that we use to dye these baits, and I'm sure that's helping me with my fishing. I'm turning up at these places and there's green algae and weed everywhere. I think it's just a little bit of an extra edge on the ground bait because I know that's what's being used to dye it. I've not got any sort of like chemical smells in my head or anything like that, and it's just got in my head and I know that that's one of the reasons why these ground baits have been so successful recently. So I'm really, really happy about that. And it's a nice little bit of information because I know you guys like a bit of information about what's in and where your ground bait comes from. So they are the two primary ground bait mixes. Now, when I'm mixing this ground bait, it's important to talk about the fact that I'm trying to keep my mix quite heavy. I've mentioned this early before. So you're going to see something that I'm going to do now when I mix it up all right, that it gives another edge to my ground bait, makes it a little bit heavier, a little bit denser, keeps it on the bottom a bit more, stops it washing away, but also gives me extra attraction. So what I'm gonna do is I've got some 50-50 green with me here. I'm just gonna pour this into the bucket. And then a little bit, like I say, only about a fifth of the mix in total will be the F1 green. Now, what I want to do is I want to almost try and make this ground bait as vibrant and as attractive as possible. So there's two ways I'm going to do that. First of all, I've got the bait booster with me in the Scopex. Now, I love the Power Scopex because it's the only bait booster you know that actually slightly dyes your bait. It's got a yellow um, dye within it. And it just means that it turns those green ground baits really vibrant in colour. And I think when you're fishing on big natural clear waters and the fish are swimming around six, eight foot off the bottom. I want something that's going to catch their eye. You know, once it starts kicking up, I can imagine a big vibrant green cloud on the bottom that's really attractive to fish. So uh, it also makes your bait incredibly 
a sweet smell in it's a really pungent sweet taste in the air it almost like sweetens off that fish meal so it's another great reason to use it and it's something that i've been mixing in with my ground bait for a while now because i know how important it is it's also brilliant down the edge as well if you want a nice sort of heavier mix there but for those big bream this is definitely something that's going to um, go in there and also i've got the fluoro rocks with me in the same principle i'm going to sprinkle a few of these in i'm going to make sure i've got that color dotted about in my peg just to catch the eye of passing fish don't put these in when you mix it i'm going to show you what to do now so i've got some water here what you need to do with your water is actually pour some of the power scopex into the water because if you had a drill it wouldn't actually matter and i have got a drill but i want to show you guys at home how you need to go about it really so i'm just going to get the power scopex and put a great big glug of it in the mixing water itself and that's just almost going to like allow it to get properly through all the ground bait that i'm using all right so give it a little bit of a stir look you can see the water's there completely and utterly yellow now which is brilliant just what i want and i'm going to give this a quick blitz so what i've done is i've, I've mixed the ground bait up slightly over wet classic of how i like to do my ground bait so a slightly over wet consistency over the next 30 minutes this will almost be a bone dry powder but what i do know is all those big sort of broken up bits of halibut pellet and crushed pellet have got full liquid within them which means they're nice they're heavy they're going to sit on the bottom nicely if i just try and add little bits of water at a time i'm not going to get the same effect i can already feel it drying out slightly so I'm just going to put a little bit more in it i want it to be over wet at this stage <laughs> So there you go. So I'm just going to leave that now, put that to one side, leave that. You can see it's starting to go that vibrant green, which I absolutely love. Very attractive. Absolutely stinks of fish meal. A really, really nice mix there. Now, once your ground bait's mixed and once it's got some water in, that's when you can add a few of your fluoro rocks. What I tend to do is I don't go nuts with the fluoro rocks to start with, just a sprinkling in, and I keep them on my side tray. So if sometimes I think to myself, do you know what, I'm going to put almost like a burst of colour into the peg, I might mix a little batch with a few extra in, but I'm just going to use the sprinkle area of the pot now and literally just sprinkle them in like a few candies on a cake i reckon i'm going to call that so look you can see there the finished mix has just got an odd fluoro rock in it's bright it's vibrant it's heavy it sticks on the bottom you can see why i'm trying to use this type of mix you can see my thinking behind it because you'll see when i get on the peg and we talk about how to feed the peg the ground bait really is the key element now some other baits i've brought me with me from the sonu range First of all, the F1 corn, a really nice sweet flavoured corn. There is no way that I would go bream fishing without corn. I literally take two tins with me every single time I go. I usually end up using one unless I'm on a mega day and that's when the second tin gets open. But just like to flick a few grains in, almost similar to the fluoro rocks bright big vibrant baits that are going to stay in the peg even if a few perch or come in and try to clear it out it's going to leave the food element the big bright baits like corn in the pegs and that's reflected in my pellet choice as well i've got some four mil thin perfect feed pellets with me today not two mils i'm not going to soak them up they're going to be hard coarse big pellets that can stay in the peg nice and heavy so when bream come in they've got something to actually eat which is really really important and it's the critical element of all these things i've shown you today so now i'm out on the box and you can see the ground bait here is totally and utterly uh, taking all that water the particles are nicely blown up but it's still like a nice dryish consistency which is great because i can play with this a little bit now if i want to if i want it dry i can have it like that like I uh, said in the introduction, it's really important that the, the pellets are nice and heavy and everything's nice and heavy and dense and stays on the bottom. It looks absolutely great, to be honest. Now, to start off with, it's really important to understand that this ground bait is a feed. Okay, this is something that the fish will hang over and eat. All right, you don't have to put gallons and gallons of particles in at the start. So I like to introduce a little bit of bait into my peg to start with. I use the, the, the biggest cage window feeder that we do. 
Um, fishing quite a long way out today, so I'm going to use 60 gram, but we do a 45 and a 30, so whichever size to suit the distance that you're going to fish. And I'm looking to put a bed of bait in accurately. Not loads, probably going to put eight or 10 feeder fulls in. Just going to let them go down. Bits are going to break off the cage, reel it in, and I'm just going to end up scattering a bit of bait out on the bottom. So for those eight or 10 feeder fulls, and then probably eight or 10 feeder fulls once I start fishing, I just need a little bit of bait in this bowl to sort of help create a bit of a taster, if you like, for what I'm going to fish for. So I get a little bit of chop worm, you know, probably like 50 or so pieces of chopped worm, pop them in the bowl, a flick of dead maggots, same of casters, literally 50 or so casters, gonna get same bits of corn, and then the same of four mil feed pellets. Now, what that's done is it's almost like said, here's a little bit of everything, guys. See what you wanna eat, and I'll learn from when I start fishing what bait is best. Once I start fishing, I'll start maybe putting more casters in, more worms, and, and I'll try to get the fish to tell me what they want to eat. But to start with, because we don't know, and because we don't wanna go over the top, I just wanna put like a little bit of a taster of everything, and it's something that's working really well for me, so it's something definitely worth a try. So you can see there, the ground bait is the main attractor and the main feed, but there's just a bit of a taster. So I'm gonna get these 10 feeder fulls now, into the peg, let it settle down for a little while, and then we'll start doing some fishing. Right, so I'm ready to get out into the peg and I've, I've got a little bit of that mix left. So I'm just gonna start with that same mix. I'm gonna use my hook baits to start with to see if I can sort of figure out what's best. I'm not ready to start putting loads of uh, casters or worms in yet because I'm not sure what's gonna be there. If I start catching a few bream or there's any indications of fish, I'll start introducing some feed. So I've just changed it down to a large cage window. I've got three maggots on. Let's get her out there and see if we can get some bites. I'm, I'm fishing with Bray today. Um, when I'm bream fishing on big waters, I think that's really important. Got like a, a, a braid set up and I've actually, um, I've gone for braid straight through today just because I want to have a little play with it and see if I can see the benefits. When it's really rough like this, I've got to be honest and say that that braid straight through, I always feel like you can see everything so much more exaggerated, especially when you've got big rods and big tips. So. You know, if you do like a bit of bream fishing on these big natural waters, then it's a, it's a great way to come fishing. You also get to feel everything when you pick, the, pick up into the fish, which is great. I've started with maggots. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna monitor my bait as I go. I'm just gonna see if, you know, do I get any bites on maggots? Is there any small fish in the peg? Um, and that, that sort of what helps dictate to me what I'm gonna feed, maybe a few dead maggots and casters. If, if maggots look like, you know, if I catch a couple of bream early on maggots, then they're eating maggots. It means I can sort of start putting some maggots and casters through the feeder. You know, if I ever don't catch anything and change to worm on the hook and the rod goes round straight away with a worm on, then that's a good indication that the fish are happy to sort of eat some worms. So, you know, these are the sorts of things I'm looking for when I'm fishing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out all the time what the, what the best bait is, what the best way to feed the peg is. And, that can even change during the day, you know. Sometimes you'll catch a few fish on maggots early or sweet corn, and then later on you'll catch on, um, you know, you'll catch on a, uh, a bait such as, um, got a small fish on there, you know, such as like um, worms later on in the day. 
feels like a perch or something like that perhaps so nice start to the session nice to get a bite straight away always gives you confidence that there's fish out there eating the particles but it just allows me to settle into it for this early part of the session i'll just sort of ring the changes for the first hour or so and then we we'll catch up with me and we'll see what what's occurring and see if there's been a a definitive bait or a few tricks that I need to use to maybe draw a few into the peg. It's a little skimmer to start with, perfect. So I'm enjoying some great fishing, to be honest. There's a, there's a lot of smaller fish having a go today. I've had loads of skimmers in this sort of first hour, like, I don't know, six ounces to a pound. We've had two bream. Look, here's another one here now. Great fishing. But what it is telling me is that there is a lot of fish in the peg and there's a lot of feeding fish in the peg. Now, you know, maybe it's because we're pleasure, out pleasure fishing today. Look. Lovely fish they are, but that means I can't just keep continuing with the ground bait because I feel like there's too many fish there and too many feeding fish there for me to sort of rely on catching bigger fish alone by just putting ground bait in. So about three or four chucks ago, I just started putting lots of um, more particles and I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I've got the same mix that we started with. And this is why this mix is so versatile and works so well. So I've got the same mix here. I'm just gonna put my hook bait on first, which is a, just putting a piece of worm on. It's a great big water. So almost like three quarters of a worm, something like that. It seems to be pretty good. Half a worm. Want a nice big target bait down there in amongst all the weed and that. Like I said, there's lots of fish feeding. It's not a shy day when you're putting on small hook baits. So. What I'm going to do is take my feeder and I've got a solid window feeder on now because I'm going to almost put more bait within my feeder. So I'm going to get a nice blob of worms. You can see that there. Pop that into the, into the feeder and nice pinch of casters. Pop that on top and then two or three pieces of corn. And all I've been doing is just scooping that into the feeder using my thumb. So the bait goes in first, and then just using the ground bait, look, to gently hold it all in, almost like entombed, if you like, within that window feeder. So it goes down, the super smelly ground bait there, which is not over wet, it's some of the original dry mix, if you like, and it's just gonna melt away pretty quickly and then release neat bait into the peg. Now, I've got a fish like that today because you know there's lots of fish bites are coming within two minutes almost every single chuck in and that tells me that you've got to be aggressive when you're getting lots of bites and lots of indications of fish it tells me you need to be aggressive with the feed because you've got lots of fish to keep preoccupied so that's a classic example how i might change things up we've had a couple of bream already see if this approach works after a couple of more fish hopefully we can uh, start attracting an odd better one as well but it's great fishing at the moment I think it's really important that you think about your ground bait consistency and texture when you're changing between feeders. So I've shown you with that window feeder how the ground bait basically hasn't been touched since I originally mixed it up and I can just pad it in almost to cover the bait in the feeder. It was nice for the original introduction, but sometimes you wanna try and change your feeder and draw more fish into the peg. It's slightly different today because there's a lot of fish in the peg and we're just trying to get bait down to them really and keep them interested. But if you wanted to draw more fish in the peg, a cage feeder that's incredibly open is one of the best ways to draw fish in. 
but your mix has got to be a bit different. This mix as it is now, if I loaded some of this mix into this wire cage, which is very, very exposed, it's almost like, yeah, I can get it in there, no problem, but in after eight feet of drop, that ground bait's out of your feeder. It's all gone and you're just ending up with a piece of wire down on the bottom and all your ground bait up in your peg, which I really don't recommend, you know, when you're feeder fishing, you're trying to catch fish on the bottom. So you do want them down on the bottom. So I always have a like what I call the working tub. So in one of my working tubs, I've just got a bit of ground bait. I'm gonna add a bit more water to that mix, all right? Just dampen it all the way through. I'm looking for the ground bait to be almost slightly over damp, a bit heavier, it becomes a bit stickier, and then it's gonna be a much better consistency to use in that open style feeder. See, now when I load this feeder, I'll be able to scoop the ground bait in and then give it a little nip. You're still gonna get plenty of release on the way down. Like, that's gonna hold now all the way to the bottom, but I'd probably say, a third of it's going to come out on the way down, something like that. So I've actually got that nice attractive trail behind it, but still got the majority of my bait down to the bottoms. So by changing the mix and the consistency of the mix, you can actually determine how you catch the fish and how you attract the fish into your peg. And it's, a, it's really important to be on it with things like that. Well, the, uh, the fishing's just got better and better. And I'll tell you, the cage feeder is actually put in a right run of these. This is sort of the third or fourth now in, in the last half an hour since changing to the cage. So maybe those bream preferred that different form of presentation. Maybe they like that more open bait. And it shows how important it is. Look at the state of that, great fish. How important it is though to mix it up. You can't just be setting your ways You've got to be prepared to ring the changes when you're fishing. And um, when you do, you can have some great results because it's been fantastic fi fishing with those skimmers earlier. But look, I mean, that is a four pound, uh, oh, a four pound bream. And, it, and by changing to the cage and making sure my ground bait was the right consistency, that's brought the right result. Let's just sort this out here so I can show you him. So not only have we had loads of skimmers in the last sort of, like I say, 40 minutes now probably, we've had, we've had several of these bream and they're big, bigger fish, better fish, they're what we came for. And I'm saying that by mixing up the, the presentation, mixing up how that bait goes into the water, the consistency and the baits it goes with has brought us the rewards today. Hope you've enjoyed the session. I think it's been really interesting to uh, look at the ground bait in sort of depth for these fish. And I'll see you next time.